And thanks for staying with us here on The Polls. Uh, there's a need for us to, uh, first of all, give you the genesis of all of this, where it started from and how we found ourselves in this uh, situation as an economy. Uh, first of all, there's a need for us to get the research background to all of this. First of all, let's get that from Isaac Kofiege, who is with our uh, research desk here at Joy News. Uh, obviously, a lot of things are happening. We're hearing of new measures that the finance minister has laid out uh, and all of these things are expected to ensure that the, there's a rebound in the economy. But we need to track this from the start. Where did we start from? You know, budget, if you could pull this down a bit. For, so the, for the 2022 budget, we realize that expenditure uh, is pegged at 137.5 billion Ghana CDs. Right. Revenue is 100.5 billion uh, CDs, leaving a deficit of 37 billion CDs. Okay, you know, uh, right. So, so for, for the purposes of clarity, what you mean is that these are extracts from the, the 2022, 2022 budget. Exactly, budget. And from the 2022 budget, we do know that the first line which you're indicating to us, this expenditure, exactly. this, this, this accounts for all government activities, exactly. the expenditure, exactly. what they'll be spending exactly. in the financial year exactly. 2022. Exactly. So in the but then they would have to make up for that. Mm -hmm. There's a need for funding to support the expenditure. Absolutely. So that's where we have this. That's where we have the, the revenue, right. which is 100.5 billion cities. And then if you should subtract the revenue from the expenditure, it should give you a deficit or a surplus. But in our mm. case, we have a deficit, not a balance, right. actually, mm. of 37, uh, 37 billion cities in the fiscal year. Right. And now if you look at the revenue, if you look at the revenue, E-Levy is inclusive. E-Levy is inclusive, which projects as almost um, 7 billion cities. So it means if you are not, if you are still delaying in passing the E-Levy, it means that, you know, automatically our um, deficit has, has actually... Um, automatically increase right. to somewhere around 40 billion cities mm. as we are as we speak. so so the tax 7 billion is what government is on the lookout for right exactly now. exactly government government has to find ways and means to mm. fund the budget deficit of mm. 37 billion right. and i'm sure the question on the, on the minds of a lot of Ghanaians is how is it that just 37 billion cities is creating such a huge um, problem for our economy in this situation where we find ourselves in right. not just ghana mm -hmm. but on the global scale every dollar every cd you know, every billion is important so mm. how you, the ways and means you you find to you know to make sure that you are able to cater for your deficits is very important mm. now you, you just listen to the finance minister saying that as of december 2021 our total desktop was 351 350 you know, 351, you know, a billion. 0.8 uh, billion. No, 51, exactly. Okay, so, so the 0.8. Yeah, exactly. So right. 51, 51 billion, you know, CDs okay. as of December. That's how much we owe as a nation. Yeah, exactly. The, right. the, the public, that's mm -hmm. around 80.1% um, mm -hmm. of the total GDP of this country. Uh, is there an increase generally? Oh, yeah, there, there is. The there is figures. about right. 2%. You mm -hmm. know, now there's still the big, uh, you know, IMF dilemma. Right. Because the people are still contemplating as to whether these measures mm -hmm. outlined by the finance minister are, right. uh, as to whether they are robust enough because most of them are short term or either medium term. Mm. So if you look at the, the borrowing plan, that's the issuance calendar for the first quarter of this year, government intends to borrow 24.5 billion cities from the domestic market. Right. Exactly. Th that's the domestic market. The domestic market. Right. This is how much government intends to borrow from the domestic market. Now, the next slide, will, I'll show you the breakdown of government you know, intends to do with this money. But in February, we intend to borrow 9.3. Uh, in February, uh, January, 9.3. February, 7.55. And March, 7.65. Now, the next slide, you know, you realize that out of this 24 billion government wants to borrow from the domestic right. market, a whopping um, 20.7 billion will be as rollover, meaning that loans that are mature, government right. is going to use this um, 20.7 20, so, 20. so billion. In fact, the, the <laughs> will be left a significant just, portion of the exactly. amount we're going for. The government will be left with just 3.8 uh, billion, billion to work with. So work with. even the That's amount we're going for, mm -hmm. we'll use that to service another day exactly that, that's how bad the situation exactly. is right. so all we're left with is 3.8 billion and that's why government is critically pushing so for if you have a for, deficit for of all, uh, exactly such as the e levy and you, all of that you have a right. deficit of almost 40 billion yes and then you, the first quarter is very crucial because mm -hmm. at this moment every billion city is important so right. the first quarter if you are borrowing 24 from the domestic market which has the probability to crowd out the private sector and then you are using um a whooping 
20.7 billion as rollovers, and you just have 3.8 billion CDs to spend on other things. It's, it's a question that you know, government Indeed. has to, it has uh, to answer. Isaac, Kofi Aji, I'm grateful yeah. that you've been able to give us all of these updates. Uh, this, it's time now for us to explore uh, the options uh, some more. Fortunate to have Dr. Williams, Pippa, Chief uh, Finance Officer at the Valley View University, join us at uh, Visum this uh, afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And also, uh, Dr. Steve Mantiel is former chairperson of the Public Interest and uh, Accountability uh, committee, Piak. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, Dr. Pepper, let me start off with you. So, having listened to the finance minister, are we on track to getting the economy, uh, I mean, on its good standing? Thank you very much um, for calling me and your viewers. Um, I think that um, listening to the finance minister, um, I see that there is hope. Um, the hope that I have is that. Um, in the net, in the short possible term, the measures that have been aligned, um, I see that is going to bring the confidence back from our international partners, and that is why the minister is confident to say that um, there is the, something in the offing of about two billion dollars where they, they are going to raise some 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 funds. But I, I'm also um, happy, especially because um, I am in a private university setup where I am the chief finance officer, so I know how to finance a university. When the minister spoke that, I mentioned that the public tertiary universities are, are now, the workers they are now going to be removed from government payroll, and then the universities or tertiary universities will be paying themselves. They are going to use their IGF to pay themselves. That alone, just uh, looking at the mass, that alone is what is saving the minister almost 1.5 billion cities uh, for, for this year. But unfortunately, the minister did not give a timeline to it. With all the measures, he was very specific with timelines. But when it came to that particular um, announcement, he only mentioned that this is an action that is going to be to, to be done by, by, by the Ministry of Finance. I'm sure the Ministry of Education is aware, um, especially where we saw that um, lecturers or university faculty went on strike for a very long period beginning of this year which affected the opening um, the wage bill on coming uh, on, on the line of tertiary financing is very huge i, I know that most of the big uh, public universities in the country now are operating like me the private universities but then uh, still government pays them their their salaries one government is going to give them only a fixed amount of money to operate it was going to put us all in the same basket and we will compete with them. So it, it gives me some hope that this action alone is going to save the country by 1.5 billion cities. If you look at the measures that government mentioned, um, the rest are, 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 are on the line of, um, say, political appointee sacrificing. Government is focusing on operational efficiency in terms of um, reducing the, or, or unnecessary um, expenditure items like conferences, and also, and I was also very happy to hear the minister say that they are going to prioritize capital expenditure items. He, he, the minister said that they were going to focus on ongoing projects. What it means is that government is admitting that their agenda 111, the hospital projects, may have to be deferred for a period because currently there are a lot of projects which were started by the previous government which are hanging and they also have also started some projects they may also have to to, to address uh, let's talk uh, about so let's talk about the slashing the salaries of uh, government appointees particularly the heads of state-owned enterprises is that a feasible option particularly when we know that the institutions themselves have challenges which 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 the government has to tackle in terms of revenue leakages why, why then focus on the income of persons heading those institutions so I think the fact is that um, the appointees, the government appointees, must show some sacrifice. Because um, as you remember, Professor Adair mentioned that their sacrifice of 25% would be a sign that they are ready to make sure that the economy runs. So precisely, so, precisely why I'm asking the question. Because if you have a government appointee slash their salaries by some 30%, and yet within the institutions within which they find themselves, uh, suffering seriously in terms of public accountability and then ensuring that we block the uh, revenue leakages, that will come to naught. It's as though 
you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, isn't it? I, I, I understand what you're saying. That right. They may find that they may find other means to get their thirty percent back. Yeah. <laughs> that is that is what we are trying to say. But I, I'm sure that um, as it was mentioned, I think someone has a question about implementation. This is the time that government may have to give us the hope on the line of being disciplined. Uh, if government is able to ensure that there is discipline, then the confidence we have is that government may have to monitor their procurement processes uh, to make sure that uh, these appointees don't get it back in another another form. And so this is what I think that um, government must focus on. What the measures they will put in place to ensure that government is disciplined to do it. In my earlier conversations in the past, I've mentioned that government should go to IMF and I've been always using the word discipline. So now that they have come out with the measures, the next one is the discipline to implement it. If we fail, then I still stand by my, my advice that we, we, we need to go to IMF because with IMF, we're able to discipline ourselves. So the implementation strategy is very, very important. Mm, uh, and, and this is the point the finance minister says. Uh, some prudent measures have to be put in place in terms of internal and homegrown solutions, including the controversial subject of the e-levy. Uh, he talks about the fact that Parliament would have to collaborate with government at this moment. Uh, how crucial is this issue of uh, e-levy to, to, I mean, averting this whole uh, return to the IMF? Is it that dire? Yeah, we, are, and we, have, we have noted that um, the e-levy, as I, I predicted, that government needed it to go and um, uh, borrow in the future by collateralizing it, which has been admitted by the Minister of Transport. So government really need the e-levy. Let me do some analysis. I think you started with that one. Mm. So the, the deficit is 30, $37 billion. $37 billion. This action or the policies just have, which have been just announced by government is only going to reduce the 37 billion by 3.5 3 billion. So what it means is that um, virtually there's about um, um, say um, 30, 30, 30, 33.5 billion still left. If government is still able to raise the 2 billion to come in as revenue, the deficit will reduce to mm. 14.4 billion. Right. Uh, and just uh, hold on for me, Dr. Pepper. Let's uh, also bring in uh, Dr. Steve Manteo, former, uh, formerly in charge of uh, PIAC, uh, who is also joining this conversation. In fact, uh, he made an earlier call that one of the flagship programs, uh, the Free Senior High School uh, policy, has to be really looked at, considering how we're using revenue that we're generating from uh, oil proceeds. He's also joining us now uh, on this conversation. Thank you, Doc, for your time. So the finance minister has spoken. He's not touched uh, deeply on government flagship projects, which means that government will continue to protect all of these um, policies, including the issue of the free SHS uh, uh, policy. But then the question now is, how do we maximize funding from our oil revenue to also help in the economic challenges that we're facing now? Well, I think it's, it's good news that the flagship programs, most of, it, most of which are um, social expenditures, were, were not touched. But it does not take away the need to take a look at the sustainability of these flagship programs in terms of financing and the pressures it puts on government own and budget. Um, if you look at the free SHS, I think that it's a bit onerous to uh, put the funding on, on debt to revenue streams. That's revenue on oil is taking as much as um, um, uh, 1 1.2, 1 1.3 billion Ghana cities a year. Uh, this is quite onerous. And I think that um, if we are not careful, it gets to a point when we are not able to derive much from the oil sector, it, it can create serious problems for the sustainability of the free SHS. So we need to begin to see how we can maybe uh, sustainably finance the program. Mm. And that will mean diversifying the revenue streams that come to finance the free SHS. I, I make the point that uh, in the year of introduction of the uh, free SHS, that was in 2017, uh, Cocoa Board alone had 
about 13,000 students on this scholarship program. Um, we were being so, so much in a hurry that it did not occur to us to set to a cocoa board and, and get cocoa board to contribute its budget for the 13,000 students to the government's uh, resources for financing the pre -SH. And that would require the creation of a certain pool of fund. Let's say, for instance, um, at the time we had get fund. So you could restructure get fund to receive this extra revenue from cocoa board. There are other uh, corporate entities, um, um, Anglewood, Ashanti, Goldfields, Newmont, Unilever. Lots of companies also had scholarship programs for support. In fact, GMPC also has scholarship program for second cycle education. So if we had sat down, we could have gotten all these corporate bodies to channel their resources for financing their scholarship mm. program to complement what government has so that right. it does not put undue pressure on government's scant, scanty resources. Right. And, and I guess the question is, how much of a difference will that make to the Ghanaian economy? Well, the difference it makes is that it, free, it frees up some of the money, the 1.2, 1.3 billion, that goes currently to finance the pre -SH from the oil sector and also the other uh, portion, which is about pre quarters that comes from government taxes. Once you diversify the financing sources, what you do is that you limit the pressures on the two main sources of funding. And again, it actually safeguards the project, I mean, the program, because then when you fail to realize one particular revenue stream, it does not unduly jeopardize the program in its entirety. Currently, we have only two revenue streams. So if one fails to come through, then you have a serious problem on your hand. The children will be home when they are supposed to be in school. All right. Uh, and Doc, we need to wrap up on this conversation. But just um, your take on, on your take actually on um, uh, what we've heard that some um, those in charge of the state-owned enterprises are to slash their salaries by some thirty percent. That's the indication we're getting. Are you confident that that measure will be uh, forcefully applied uh, by the executive? Because the challenge is we are not even able to monitor that carefully and we, we don't know if government will be transparent enough to give us the details on that I, I'm, well that depends on the government's own uh, political will to carry out what it says it wants to do but i don't think that is where the problem is we need to cut government's bureaucracy down to the size it was in 2016. what do i mean by this look since 2016 i mean let's say coming starting from 2017 we have created deputy director position, sometimes two, three, in all the state-owned enterprises, uh, public parastatals. That is not good because with every additional position you create comes with huge expenditure outlay. So I think that government will, will need to, if they are really minded to cut costs, then they have to cut the bureaucracy down to its former size. That's a way to free up resources to do other things for the country. Uh, we need to go, but are you hopeful anything will change soon? with regard to the Ghanaian economy? Well, government has shown some level of goodwill to, to kind of cut public expenditure, but it doesn't go far enough. I think government could do more. Now, whether or not it would implement what is the measures it has actually laid out, is, it, we have, I think time will tell. Um, I am not too optimistic, but I will give the government the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what then happens. Uh, Dr. Steve Manteo, I'm grateful that you've been able to join us here on the Joining Channel. Uh, Dr. Pepper, your final words uh, on this as we wrap up on this conversation. So, thank you. So, um, as I've mentioned, um, now we want to see the disciplinary action of the government. This is the time. You have to prove to us that, yes, we will not go to um, IMF. Um, the, the programs we have been lined up are always in line with what IMF will ask us to do. Um, cut some um, costs which they have laid down also on employment you remember that the minister mentioned that the post names they are going to make sure that they are removed in terms of revenue generation the e-levy is still hanging and yeah. um, tax filing government mentioned that mobile application for for tax filing is going to be rolled out very soon um, which which means that um, a lot of us will have to make sure that we become tax compliant and right. we pay our due taxes but then we expect government to also make sure that what is what is due us is due to us. Mm. The, the 15 pesos given to us for only three months is not enough. If you ask me, 
the 15 pesos on the uh, disc or reduction on fuel petroleum is not enough. Government is not asking the OMCs to also reduce their margins. They are right. they are in to do business. Right. So uh, we, we, we want government to do more. I was thinking that government may look at the PAYE, pay as you end structure, and then come out with some um, on the on the bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, the five percent, the government may do something about it, but right. And because they need more revenue, government has, has not gone on that. Uh, this so, is the time, uh, in fact, there are calls for uh, programs with subsidy to be checked. You, you just said uh, Dr. Steve Manteo talk about the free student high school policy, for instance. Uh, are you also of the view that something needs to be done about this uh, policy to free up fiscal space for government to act? For me, I've been, uh, I've been talking about NAPU. Mm -hmm. That program alone, every month we are spending close to a billion cities. On 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 uh, on, um, on people on that program, but they are not productive enough. You you so mean NAPCO, giving, NAPCO personnel are not personnel, productive? Yes. They are not productive enough. What we have yeah, we have uh, Grow Ghana. We have so many modules. Persons who've been sent into public office. The, 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 just just mention to me which which one have you seen that is adding on to on to what we have? Oh. We, we have not. So if, if for me, if those uh, with, uh, with Ghana Revenue Authorities, if you were going to ask them to go to Ashanti region, where the tax collection, according to a minister, is 1.3% contribution, if we ask them to go out and make sure we give them some electronic devices to make sure that everybody pays his taxes in Ashanti region, that alone will increase uh, our taxes more than the e-levy. Right. But we, we, we have people we are paying but you are not working. Mm. So we'll see about that. Uh, but we're so grateful that you've been able to spend uh, some time with us um, as we continue with our special coverage on the finance minister's address on uh, challenges facing Ghana's economy. Don't forget.